Hey there, gang. Today's highlight is not actually so much on this build itself, and more on opportunism and the importance of game sense and how pivotal it can be in flat out winning your matches, not only sooner than you might expect, but also possibly being the only situation where you may have been able to win that game in any other circumstance, you know, and this is something that you can't ascertain in that moment. It's something that you will only know through hindsight after the fact if those win conditions don't present itself, which is kind of why I wanted to talk about this match, because in this match, it was actually very short by comparison, especially when you take into account that we weren't running any gen perks, we were running pure chase perks, and further, as y'all even see, we didn't even get full value out of our perks. It's not as if we were getting crazy, unrelenting coup synergy. We weren't even entirely relying as much on Zanshin, although Zanshin was probably the most instrumental perk next to coup itself. And superior anatomy, I don't think we vaulted a single window, so that basically did nothing. We didn't win this game due to our build, we didn't so much win this game due to anything but our game sense. And so I think y'all are gonna really, really appreciate that. For at a time into his chase, right? When Doctor's 1v1ing like Clown, he performs a lot better than when he's 1v2. And what that means, oh shoot, what that means is that you need the support from Forest Penance to generate enough efficiency and prevent as much loss of momentum from sur uh, survivors that are bringing med kits, right? Yeah. They have med kits, they know where their teammates are at on clock callouts. You know, they are going to be able to, without forced penance, recover from that health state in a way where the delay from you not hitting their teammate is going to be game winning for them. That's literally the pressure that they need, okay? Let's see, he vaulted over that. That was not the bottle I wanted to fucking throw. How is the generator already done? Y'all, y'all see this, right? I literally walk up and hit Steve once. Sorry, not Steve, I hit Leon. But hey, that gives me Q. That does give me Q, so. I did that, oh my gosh, dude. I do this because I'm afraid of her getting pallet stun. She can't get pallet stun from there. Brand new part, brand new part toolbox with one other survivor potentially, maybe, maybe? There's also a cot. Someone is nearby, by the way. Pretend like we're, we're, uh, we're oblivious. Orbital strike coming up top. I fucked up. In the strip club. I love her name. Jeff, wait, what the fuck? Ooh. Where are we going? Hold up, where are we going? I'm gonna go for this, Jill. Why the fuck not? She has pallet to her left, but we won't let her get it because we have... Who? Oh. That's why I bring Q gang. Yeah, let me get out this front door. You know what? We're going to the back door. Fuck it. Back door is safer, easier, guaranteed, less annoying. Tip it. Oh, yeah. We just slid it in. Pause. All right. Let's see. They're coming around backside, by the way. Gosh, it's like so hard to not even like... All right, let's see. They have a tile over here. Someone absolutely was here, by the way. They go this way, I think, maybe. I swear I feel like someone is in this area potentially crouching, but I really shouldn't be spending my time here. I really shouldn't. I just wanted to intercept and get a very easy hit over this side because it chains into a very, very weak area and or a place that I can capitalize. But instead, I'm not kind of sitting here with my fucking pants down right now trying to... <sighs> All right, we're gonna go check over here. I need to go somewhere, gang. Like, where that... This is why I camp a tunnel, though. Do y'all see this, right? Like, we, we sit around here, we don't see where the person is, we now go look for gens, and there are three survivors. So there's the whole fucking team, am I right? That is, that is really, like, in essence, right? Imagine if the map was a bit larger. And I'm not, I'm not like, mad or anything. I'm not, like, complaining. I'm just, like, hoping, hoping y'all kind of, like, get what I'm talking about when I, uh, especially say it like this. Kick it like this. She's not gonna be able to get it because we did get the pink down this way. Good attempt. There we go. Uh, did they? They didn't. It's just random chance. Um, I actually don't want to kick this. I'd rather leave their uh, two people slugged and play around this pressure, believe it or not. Because I could hook these people or I could play around a double slug pressure. And a double slug pressure could potentially be the call? Potentially? Maybe? Good, 
good. That's the information I was looking for, by the way. That's literally the information I was looking for. Um, good. We springboard off of this. Get the yellow first. Free drop. Come back this way. Mm. That's the tip. They're both injured. But he's coming in while injured. Oh shit, she got picked up. Unbreakable? That's unbreakable, by the way. Well, I won the game. Like, do you have any idea who you're, who you're playing against? Like, I literally, like, y'all, like, I don't need my eyes to beat you. I don't need my eyes to beat you. Just gonna hook him. <laughs> Cheers, gang. <laughs> Alright, where's the last one at? There she is. Should be a hook over here. Should be good. <laughs> this door broken. Oh yeah, we got this uh this hook right here. I also got this one right here too. I'm not gonna bother kicking this gen because I'm afraid of him potentially coping because I didn't wait long enough. Put the other pink on the back side. We'll guard deer. One more, just in case. Reload. We're good. Lovely. Lovely. Murder clown is back. So that was a rather short match. Now, although Badham is a very, very bad map for Clown as well as other killers, I recognized in a specific moment right after we downed the Kate after she was trying to protect the Jill that this was a game-winning moment. If I were to attempt to make a play around a pickup, whether that was kicking a door or carrying out manually using yellow bottles, I knew that it would take a lot of time to do this. I knew that I wouldn't be able to reliably do that to one of the two survivors while also contesting the other while they're on the hook as I pick up their friend. And in turn, I would be giving something up. And in order 
to give something up and actually get a win afterward, I have to be able to capitalize for that loss of otherwise gained pressure had I not done that right, had I instead left them slugged in the main building, which is why I decided in the moment to do that. I thought that rather than play around hook states, rather than try to see if I could say even hook the Jill first and tunnel her afterward, even if it means that she gets unhooked early, right? I decided to go for the four-man slug very, very early into the game because both Jill and Kate went down on the bottom floor of Badham Main Building. And while Badham Building is really strong for Chase, you know what it's also really bad for? It's also bad for being injured and not going down in the main building. You know, if, if every single survivor is in the main building, there's only two ways that they can get out of it if I don't break the doors. They can either go out through the front door or they can go out through the back door. Well, you know, they could go out through the sides if I broke them, but we didn't. And since we blocked the one side on the left, they weren't able to get through the front and they weren't able to get through the back. We cut them off by both choke points and in turn, we were able to secure that four-man slug in the process. Now, there was a chance too, of course, right, that they would have gotten out assuming that Jill would have been able to avoid me, but that was the pivotal moment that I played in really securing that slug. When she forced me to kick that pallet and got that blind, had I not specifically angled and moved myself around that corner while blind, I did that while blind, by the way, she might have had a chance of either getting away, picking up one of her teammates, and then things would have repeated and, you know, continued in turn, right? There's a very good chance that they would have all gotten out of there, or one or two of them would have gotten out there, and that's really all it takes in order to prevent the four-man slug that I was going for is the game-winning condition. So that was also a really, really big deal. Now, as far as to how I did that, I know a lot of people are probably wondering, how did you catch that Jill after she blinded you when you can't even see? A really big factor in chasing survivors while blinded is following the little radial indicator. So when you get blinded, you get a little like, you could call it, I don't like an arrow that points at you near the center of your screen. It points directly at you coming from where the survivor who blinded you. And what this means is that it, it follows them too, by the way. I want to be very, very clear. This somewhat, this somewhat turns and I, I believe it kind of follows where they're going. You can use this arrow when and this is what I did to follow her around the corner. So as you'll even see this, right? As you'll see me when I kick the pallet and I'm moving, watch that arrow as I'm turning and I'm chasing her. And by the time the blind expired, I was right on top of her. That's how we were able to get that four man slug. And if I didn't get her again, I probably wouldn't have won this game. You know, lastly, again, I want to, I want to reemphasize. I don't think my perks played a major part in this. Uh, that's not to say none of them did, but it's just mostly independently Ku and Zanshin. We didn't have any crazy synergy. We didn't have any crazy niche value from the superior anatomy or even unrelenting. You know, this was game sense the full and through. And I think that for a lot of people, this is something that they may genuinely need. Game sense is a very, very big deal, especially with Clown, because when you are playing Clown and you only have Chase and you are lacking in map mobility then that means that your game sense is extremely important. If you are making poor decisions, even if you are good in chase, well, that's not going to still result in you getting kills because of the fact that Clown isn't able to keep up in the 1v4, right? You're going to be winning your chases very well, but the survivors, due to the efficiency of, of them being able to complete their objectives with or without toolboxes, you're still not going to beat them. Especially if you're running this build or a similar build that lacks in Corrupt, it doesn't have Deadlock, it doesn't have Pain Res or any form of Instant Gen Regression, which in turn means that all Gen Progress is going to stick. That is a big problem that Clown is a killer faces. But other than that, I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. I have more highlights coming in the future, much longer projects, especially those that delve into the specifics of this build. Why on earth do I run unrelenting? I get that question somewhat frequently, both on stream and also sometimes in the comments of my videos. Well, I promise y'all there is a very, very good reason for that, even if it doesn't present itself in these matches or in some others. I wouldn't be running a perk in my build consistently if I didn't genuinely believe there was a good reason for it, let alone a reason that I couldn't articulate with very, very good description. 
but also if you're interested in learning how to play clown better i have a very detailed clown guide that i'll have a link in the description and lastly this match as well as others where i sometime don the wig as well as my uh my little red nose you can find a link to my twitch stream in the, uh, twitch stream in the description as well i typically stream during the weekdays but other than that i'll see y'all next time later gang